Okay, so in this video, I want to talk a bit about the factory pattern, which I'd heard of before, but had never really found a use case for, or had never really used until very recently, as in just last week. And me looking into the factory pattern, or me finding out about it, came about from this question that someone called Grimmy Kimu asked in the Hacks Flexor forums. He or she wanted to know how to loop over some classes in order to manipulate them on each instance. So I gave an answer, which is down here, and I spoke about using a map and using the type create instance method, which is very specific to hacks. And Gamma11 came back to me with this link saying it's probably better not to use the type create instance and use the factory pattern. So I followed the link and came to this page where Dan has a blog post where he talks about replacing the create instance method with the factory method. So you have a map and you have a function that instantiates the class when you need to. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a bit about that. I'm gonna talk about use cases for it. And if you're watching this and you're not a fan of hacks, please stay till the end because I'll show you a TypeScript version of this factory method. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this use case. And although it's fake, it has actually happened to me before on a larger scale when I made a game and I solved it without the factory pattern in a more tedious way. Let me explain the use case. So you have a game with three levels, one, two, and three. And each level inherits from a kind of level parent class. So when the player is on the level or starts the level, it will automatically save and put the name or key or identifier of the level up here in the save data. Let's say a player is on level two. And I forgot to mention each level is its own class. So you have to instantiate the level in order to start it. So if the player is on level two and they save that level in here, when the player next visits the game, it has to instantiate level two and not level one or three. So let's go through solving that with the factory pattern. Here, I'm going to use hacks, but like I said before, the factory pattern can be used in most object oriented languages. So I'll show you a version of this happening in TypeScript as well. But for now, let's stick with hacks. And this is a pretty much a blank canvas with a class called main and a function called main as well. So let's go ahead and make our level parent class. And this is just gonna have one method, which will be a public function. And this will be start. So this will essentially start the level. Um, we want to pass in an attribute called name, and that'll be of type string. So all this will do is return a string, which will say, you are about to start name, or level name to be more specific, but we'll leave it as name. So let's make a few levels that inherit from this class. We will have um, class level one. And I don't wanna put much in here at the moment, so I'll leave it blank and we'll have a few more of these. So we'll have level two and we'll have level three. So these are our levels. And because they extend from the main parent level, they'll have access to this class as well. Let's make a constructor in the parent level class and it will do nothing for now. So if I just were to test this, so if I just were to do something like trace level one, and all this will do is run start, boom, perfect. So this is essentially just running this level class and is instantiating this parent and running this start method. So now what we wanna do is to have a key for each level so that we can store it in the save data. And for that, we're going to use a map. Maps are not unique to hacks. They can be used in other languages as well. So we're going to create a static variable, which is a final variable, which is a constant in hacks, and it will be called levels map. It will be a type map, and it will have a string as a key, and something called level factory. Now level factory we haven't yet made, but it's a type that is unique. So let's put an empty array here, which will represent our map, and we're gonna make a type def for this level factory. Essentially, this type def will contain what's gonna be inside our map, and that will be a function. So it'll be a function of void, so it will take an argument, and it will return a string. Let's put this together now. So we're, we're gonna have level one as the key, and that will be attached to this function, which will run or which will instantiate level one. And that's it, we'll do the same for each level, so level two and three as well. And there we have it, this is our map. So if we were to save a level in our save data, 
we wouldn't save the class, but we'll save this string, which will reference the class that we want. So now let's try this. Let's get our levels map in our main function. And we are going to say, imagine we've saved level two. We need to run this function, which will instantiate the level two class and give us access to this start method. So we'll put that here and we will say level two. Looks like I forgot to add the parentheses after each class, so I will do that now. And I've returned an incorrect type, so this should be a type level. So let me run through what this is doing. This is going through our levels map, which will get our second level, run our second level class, which is inheriting from our main level and is running the method that the start, passing a string into that pass, sorry, into that start method and returning this string. Now this is all well and good. The, we have the player saved information and we're loading the correct level. However, let's say for some reason we wanted to loop over each level. Well, that can be done with a map very easily. And I will show you how to do that now. So let's have a for loop and we are going to say name for our level name. And we are going to say level for the level function or the level factory in levels map. So with this line, we are grabbing the name of our level which is this and the level function itself. With that, we can write this trace to run each level, which is this. And we can have access to the start method so we can print the name like so. And there we have it. So it's looping over each level and passing in the key as the value that goes in the start. Now, before I continue, there's one kind of alteration we can make to this code to make it a bit cleaner. And this is exclusive to hacks is we can just get rid of this and replace that with a dot new. And that works the same way. We can do it for each class or each function here. And this is a kind of trick or refactoring that you can do to this map to make it look a tiny bit cleaner. Now you might have guessed we can get away with just having the class instantiated without running a function. So if I got rid of this, got rid of the level factory and just put level so it's not this type and got rid of these parentheses so it's not running a function, this will compile fine. But the benefit of having a function here and using the level factory type is that you can instantiate it on this line. So at this point, I'd say about at line 20 or at line 19, every single class has been instantiated. But for this case, we only want to instantiate one or to be, more, to be more specific, for this case, we only want to instantiate one class. Now let me show you this same example in TypeScript. So here we have it. We have level one, two, and three. And if I get rid of this commit.code and run the code from here, you can see it will pass level one, level two, and three the exact same way. And I'm also using a map, which works in JavaScript. I'm also using a parent class, and each level class is extending the parent class. I also have the example where you can run just one class, but for some reason TypeScript doesn't like this. So if I clear the log and run this, it will work. So it just passes in level two and runs the level two class, but I don't know why TypeScript doesn't agree with this get method. So there you have it. This is the factory pattern in action. It's better than using the type create instance method because this is more performant it's more universal. So if this were to compile to a language that isn't JavaScript, say C++ or C Sharp, then this technique is beneficial because you're not using the hacks specific create instance method. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. I make videos and release them every Thursday. So stay tuned next week for the next one.